All right, so right off the bat, no Catherine, no Adagio. The Adagio band specifically is the best thing can, that Vertigo, Vertigo Black can do because this takes out so many compositions from the Kinetic team. And now we have to see Kinetic. They have to make sure, like, they, they came prepared for this. They know Vertical will be, uh, be banning that Adagio away from them. All right, we see a Fortress come out for Kinetic. Vertigo Black counters with an Arden and that Sky that's done so well. So we've seen Sky today and Vertigo Black. The thing is, their positioning is so good and they make the most use out of uh, Vanguard and the same with Serious Strike. Wow, so we have that early game pressure from Fortress and Ringo combined with the late game Juggernaut Vox. What do you think of this Kinetic lineup? To be honest, like they're gonna have Kinetic's lineup in that jungle is very strong. Most likely it will be Ringo and Fortress going together just because they're more towards that early game where Vox, he does need some time to scale up and putting him up in that lane would be the best idea for them. All right, so if that is a jungle sky along with Arden, do they need to be very conservative in the early game? It kind of fits with uh, Vertigo Black's historically passive style. Anyway, oh, uh, Kashka comes in. Uh, I doubt that'll be a lane Kashka, right? So I guess we'll see Sky in the lane, Kashka countering the fortress in the jungle. So this is gonna be heavily dependent on Beowulf here. He has to have that vision because if Ringo and Fortress jump onto them where they're shocked by surprise, they will get bursted down really quickly. Okay, so we haven't seen any Kashka so far in this tournament. She did uh, get hit a little bit with the nerf bat in 115. Why would they choose Ta uh, Kashka here as opposed to uh, someone else, maybe like a Crystal Taka or something? Well, Kashka is like a very strong assassin. And with the builds that are currently being used for her, she's able to have that sustainability always being up front, making it perfect for Sky to stand in the back and going up against Vox, going up against Ringo. They're very squishy heroes, and as long as Koshka jumps onto them and locks one of them down, Sky could follow up and do a massive amount of damage. Tasty Bacon and Humanist, we got a Koshka! We finally see a Koshka. It's been the entire tournament thus far until we finally got this pick. There obviously was changed a bit in 1.15. A lot of players have moved away from it, but Vertigo Black, they pick it up here. They think it's still strong. They think it's still viable. I tend to agree with them. We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, only time will tell at this point, but uh, exciting to have Koshka back out onto the fold. And uh, when you look at this bacon, do you think that this Koshka comes out strong against this combo? Well, we'll just see right here. It's Vixen moving in. Fear Poseidon's just going to eat him alive. A first blood at the first minute mark. Beowulf will be uh, quick to just try and make an exit out of the jungle here, but getting eaten alive in two kills. The Halcyon Hammer's kinetic. Uh, is not Maybe not a Cinderella story so, anymore. Uh, These guys just on fire. Fire out the gates. I think to answer your question, uh, no. No, Kashka is not going to look terribly strong right off the bat. Yeah. But that was a really, really great play by Halsey and Hammers. They know that when you have a Kashka, you want to be aggressive. That's how you play Kashka is try and make a play early on. And they did, they start that they skipped their first camp. They skipped the healing camp in the back and went straight into the middle so that they could meet them at level two with that fight and take the fight to the Kashka instead. And we saw how well it just worked out. Oh, getting it, a it was kills. amazing. And when we look at this team, Halcyon Hammer's Kinetic, they're talking about being a Cinderella story. Everyone's saying, oh, they came out of nowhere. Uh, but now that we've seen them, we've talked with them, they feel like these guys think through this game deeper than almost anyone that I've talked to. Yeah, especially in the draft phase. As best Chuck NA, he's going to be going down to an early three-man gank. And just like that, Halcyon Hammer's uh, they've taken this energy they've got stored up and they are making it happen 3-0 in the first two minutes. Well, I mean, what do you do when you get jumped on? Uh, suddenly you're moving slower because you got Achilles shot and then they're moving faster because they got the fortress. It's just really tough in an isolated situation. They jump on to Fear Poseidon, taking a lot of damage. They just didn't expect that to be coming in. But uh, Fortress actually getting the kill on the Koshka and uh, these guys are going to go ahead and move back. Chrissy eating a little damage from Best Chuck. Sonic Zoom himself out of that forward barrage and uh, reset his position here, but 4-0 for Halcyon Hammers. Did these guys come out of the gates hot or what? Yeah, and you know, the thing is though, what do you do with these kills? They're making pressure happen though. They're denying farm away from the side of Vertigo Black, uh, and the gold lead is slowly growing now. They're already at about 500 gold at just three minutes. That's a pretty good number to be at this early in the game, and it looks like they may be finding Beowulf once again. Yeah, this is gonna be kill number five if they just eat him alive. Fortress, he's a hungry little dog today and just getting these kills. Ooh. Oh my goodness, best job was... under turret. So a uh, nice kill here in return. That's going to be very important for morale just for Vertigo Black after those early deaths. Yeah, a bit of a misstep there by Chrissy. 
uh, able to be taken down by that forward barrage. Best Truck and A actually just ate two turret shots, so now he's going to have to uh, play safe for a bit. But oh my, my goodness, goodness. Hal Hammers, where is this aggression coming from? Well, I mean, obviously they feel that they can do it. They moved aggressively in the beginning, and once they've got that advantage, they're just going to keep the pedal to the floor, keep that pressure up. And every time, if there's two heroes attacking this Koshka, it doesn't matter if it's an early game hero, she's just going to get eaten up. Yeah, and I mean, obviously Ringo and Fortress, both also very strong early game heroes as well. And so it's it's really just a battle of who's going to get that snowball rolling, who's going to get themselves ahead. And right now, the answer is Halcyon Hammers, but you can't get complacent. You know, you look at the scoreboard, you see 5-1 at four minutes. You, th you can start to think, oh man, we're really far ahead. We've got this in the bag and we can just keep taking fights at will. But that is absolutely not the case. I mean, they this is by no means a, a early game that cannot be come back from uh, oh, yeah. if you are Vertigo Black. So the, you have to keep the pressure on. That's, that's honestly probably one of the most difficult things about playing so aggressive in the first few minutes is you have to keep that pace up throughout the entire game or you risk letting the other team come back right back in and the, the pace has already I mean I say already it's only five minutes in but <laughs> it does feel like the pace has slowed down uh, at least just a little bit but it looks like right now they're trying to get it kicked right back up again yeah all three heroes from both squads up in this lane little poke coming out of fear poseidon here uh getting some pop shots onto vixen onto beowulf they're gonna go ahead and move back down towards this jungle pick up some items at the shop and uh vertical black happy to have just a little bit of space here and what, what do you think we're gonna see out of koshka as the item builds here uh, it's gonna be aftershock probably first item. hold that thought oh. chrissy engaged onto vertical black all coming out of that bush and uh, it's now sweet generous it's gonna be moving forward on that fortress vixen taking a lot of damage one more shot would have sealed that deal uh he's able to get himself out of there uh yeah but how do you see koshka building yourself moving forward um definitely gonna be that aftershock rush i i love aftershock first item especially against a team that's uh as fairly squishy as what House and Hammers has put together, you know, a lot of low health uh, base stat heroes for right, the right. House and Hammers, so the Aftershock does a lot of work, and then I would expect it to go actually fairly tanky, obviously Fountain of Renewal is a very popular item, but there's going to oh. be a Yummy Catnip Frenzy on the Chrissy, and Chrissy, uh, yeah, there's no getting out of that one alone. There you go, I mean, I was, I was talking with Zekin earlier about Koshka, and I was like, is Koshka viable anymore? And he's like, yeah, man, I, I will pick up a support Koshka just for that Yummy Catnip Frenzy, it's so good. Look at this engage coming out, Koshka just eaten alive once Ringo is on her, he, just the damage coming out is so intense. You see that Hellfire Brew come out, and uh, it's going to send Best Chuck in A back to base, but not really much more than that. Yeah, and so Fear Poseidon and Sweet Generous just pushing up this lane. They have some good damage done onto this turret already, but uh, not really able to find a whole lot else. They are going to go into the jungle, try and make an invade, perhaps? Nope, looks like they are just going to uh, play it safe, go for those shop camps, and then uh, do some shopping of themselves. There's now already first item starting to come out. A Sorrow Blade for Best Chuck NA. Going to be rocking that Weapon Power Sky that we saw earlier. The Alternating Current now done for Chrissy and a uh, Fountain of Renewal on Sweet Generous. So two to one in terms of the tier three items right now in favor of Halcyon Hammers. So that's what that extra 1,000 gold does for you. Get you, uh, get you an extra tier three item. Yeah, definitely. And a pretty big deal this early in the game with all of this aggression that they have these items. And uh, you see constant aggression out of uh, Kinetic. They're just constantly pressuring. Now they're just going to go for a turret. Death from above did come down. Attack of the Pack's going to come out as soon as that turret goes down. Best Chuck in A. He's getting focused down. He's done. Are you kidding? Look at Chrissy. Now he wants to go on to Vixen. Vixen, he's just able to barely get himself out of there. But it's a turret. It's a kill. Halcyon Hammers, they are on point right now. Yeah, Fear Poseidon is having one heck of a game right now. 4-0-3. 100% kill participation along with Sweet Generous as well. And uh, you saw there, the Death From Above had was used to clear the wave. So as soon as they saw that, they said, you know what? We have enough of a wave here. Even with that ultimate being used on the minions, we can take this turret, go for a fight. They get the turret, they get the kill. That leads to then a gold mine and some jungle stealing away. 3,000 gold lead now all of a sudden at eight minutes. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful thing. A lot of times you can go into like that situation, as you said, try to bait out a, mm -hmm. a big spell like that. And you see, as soon as that death from above came down, they just immediately were on that turret. And uh, Vixen, Beowulf move up. That scout trap's gonna give uh, vision here to Kinetic, so nothing will come of that. But you gotta be careful. Vixen, I mean, 
So moving forward, you think his next item will be to get into that tier two uh, armor? Well, oh my goodness, Gauntlet does come down. They're caught inside, but the, all the damage is just coming out onto Vixen. And uh, so with Generis down and Vixen down, I'd say the advantage to Kinetic here. Yeah, it, I mean, it's not really an advantage either way, it, honestly, after that one. Just they the fact are, that they can keep farming. But yeah, they definitely, they're able to continue farming and uh, Best Chuck and Beowulf have to kind of stick around in the lane because there's been so much pressure put on the lane already by House and Hammers. One for one trade when it was two ultimates used the the big ultimates the uh death from above and yummy catnip frenzy were both put onto sweet generous there and that was the only kill they got if you have to use your two big stuns to get a single kill that is not the position you want to be in yeah, it's not. I mean, of course, they'd be love love to be eating up this Ringo or Vox early on in these fights, especially Ringo early on. But as you say, if Fortress is the target, there's going to be so much firepower that Kinetic are still going to be dishing out as the fight lingers on. Uh, it's just a, a very exciting matchup so far. 3K gold lead going the way of Kinetic, and it looks like they're just going to keep piling it on. Yeah, I really like the items coming out thus far. Fear Poseidon and Chrissy both getting an early reflex block because of those two big stuns. I was actually three, really. You have the Gauntlet, Yummy Cat and Frenzy, and Death from Above. So you want those uh, reflex blocks. I would expect Sui Generis to build towards a Crucible uh, pretty soon as well. Probably after a Warhorn, uh, immediately go for that Crucible. And again, Best Chuck and A, he's stuck having to use that ultimate to farm. And once it's down, that's the go signal for Halcyon Hammers. Yeah, Fortress did jump in there, but Turret doing a lot of work. But as you said, as soon as Death from Above is down, these guys know that they can take advantage and put that pressure out. I mean, Attack of the Pack is like as soon as he sees that ultimate come out, he just answers with his own. Yeah, speaking of attack of pack, I was actually really surprised to see Fortress first picked here from House and Hammers. Fortress did receive a little bit of a tweak in 1.15 as well. Right, right. Uh, the, the wolves are now affected by ability damage. But actually, hold that because there's a fight going on. Yeah, Hellfire Brew on to Best Chuck in A. Beowulf doing a lot of work in there, but it's Vixen cleaned up so quickly. They got the Ringo. That's what they're looking for. But Beowulf, he's getting eaten up, and it's going to be the ace for Kinetic here. These guys had the advantage. They get the ace. I mean, everything's going their way. Yeah, they're just looking so strong right now. And again, you know, I mentioned that when you have an early aggression composition, you have to stay aggressive. And that is precisely what they've done. They're about to take down their second turret here at 11 minutes. That's really good pace. I think the only time we've seen faster has been with that uh, the classic saw push comp that we've seen a second turret go down earlier. So they've, they're on pace now to uh, just really push their way through this game and keep this advantage and just keep it rolling further and further. Yeah, gold mine gonna go ahead and be secured here. Immense payout collected. We'll just further that gold lead here. And uh, Vertigo Black, they've gotta be having some serious discussion uh, inside those headsets right now. And I, I could only imagine uh, what they're talking about. Yeah, it's got to be, you know, who they're going to focus, I think, has to be the big discussion. Because they, with the fact that they have so many stuns and they have a lot of area control, they do have to pick one target and just try and blow them up right at the beginning. Try and lock them down and go off of that. But this is actually a big fight here. Oh, that death from above does land here. Sweet Janair's taking a lot of damage. They switched to Fear Poseidon. Oh Are you kidding? They turned it onto Vixen. Look at that stutter stabbing. Fear Poseidon! Fear Poseidon. They said this is the guy to watch. And look how much damage came out. The second ace. And these guys are going to be getting some more objectives off the back of that. Yeah, you have to give huge credit to Chrissy as well. The wait for it in that choke point knocked up, knocked the silence onto all three of them the damage went through and then all of a sudden you have the big aoe the resonance just hitting everyone he has the alternating current and uh broken myth so he's doing some serious serious damage we do see kashka uh, vixen building towards a broken myth as well i'm not a huge fan of broken myth on kashka it is very strong but re it's it because it requires the time to stack up right the way this game has been going it's the fights have been so quick yeah um, if they can keep kashka alive it will work wonders for them uh because it is just such a strong item so uh, honestly as long as if beowulf can get the uh the fountain of renewal at the right time can get the vanguard onto kashka keep kashka alive then it'll pay off in speed. So it's it's a really risky item purchase. Instead of building straight defense, second, 
So we'll have to see if it pays off for them, though. Yeah, and that puts a lot of pressure on the best Chuck and A to have very good positioning. If that Vanguard is going to be coming out on the Kochka, Yummy Cat and Frenzy comes out, is blocked. Very nice job there, and immediately eaten up. And now Beowulf is on the run. He's going to be caught, mowed down as well. And it's best Chuck and A as the last man standing for Vertigo Black. But these guys are in the base right now. Yeah, this is so quick. They're already working on these turrets. They don't even care about the minions. Look at that damage. Those 285 crits from Ringo just melt through that turret. And they're down to one turret left at before 14 minutes. Halcyon Hammers, this aggression is just working so well for them. They clearly did their research. Vertigo Black, we've known them ever since from the autumn season. They were a team that they struggled a little bit early on, but then made a surge in the late game. And Hal Sandhammers, they've clearly done their homework. They are playing directly into that strategy and doing it so well. Yeah, Achilles Shot's gonna come out. A lot of damage on the best, Chuck. They're gonna go ahead and jump forward with a Vixen. Vixen, he's gonna be eaten up here. They do get one. That is Fear Poseidon to go down. Now Beowulf, forced backwards. He's going down. Best Chuck in A, the last man, standing once again. He's gonna go ahead and kill off those puppies. Uh, but man, they're gonna be able to get a lot of damage out here. And if they can isolate him, I mean, essentially, if they play this correctly, they could get that down potentially, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and move back towards the jungle and uh, go ahead and secure a little more gold for themselves. I'm actually really surprised that they didn't go for that push. It was two on one with a full minion wave coming in. They very likely could have taken that last turret, but they decided to play it safe. They don't want to take any unnecessary risks. Yeah. So they retreat. Oh, they Kraken's try and get out. the gold mine. Will they get it in time? No, they don't. Kraken KSing the gold miner <laughs> and stealing that one away. Player hater. So Kraken. Uh, Making the plays, getting the steal coming out. Yeah, playing but. for Vertigo on this one. <laughs> but with Kraken on the table now, this becomes so much riskier for Vertigo. With only one turret left, a Kraken could really spell game over. Oh, it yeah, it could. I mean, even if Vertigo are able to steal Kraken away, I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if, like, one turret is all they get, if, if that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I would expect two just because the first turret is so far up in the lane. They haven't taken that first turret down, but it looks like uh, House and Hammers, they just want to find a fight. They're forcing the Warhorn out to try and retreat. Even the Vanguard my to get some extra goodness. move speed, but it's not enough. They still get onto oh, him. Oh my, the wait for it. The damage is there. Chrissy eating him up with Fear Poseidon poking away on the backside. Beowulf second to fall. Kashka they, can't They're just going to look this. to end. I mean, what is Kashka going to do? They can just switch right back on, and that's what they do. They go on to Vixen. Vixen does a little bit of damage, but he's down. It's the ace. This is going to be all she wrote. Halcyon Hammers kinetic GG game one 16 minutes for Halcyon Hammers to take down the crystal not the fastest game we've seen at the winter championships but still a very quick one